Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my C++ series. Last time we talked about constructors in C++ and what they are and how to use them. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already. And today we're gonna to talk about their evil twin, the destructor. So similarly how a constructor runs when you create a new instance of an object, a destructor runs when you destroy an object. So anytime an object gets destroyed, the destructor method will get called. The constructor is usually where you set variables up or do any kind of initialization that you need to do. And similarly, the destructor is where you uninitialize anything that you might have to or clean any memory that you've used. The destructor applies to both stack and heap allocated objects. So if you allocate an object using new, when you call delete, the destructor will get called. If you just have a stack based object, then when the scope ends, the object will get deleted and thus the destructor will get called. Let's dive in and take a look at some examples. So in the constructor video, we created this wonderful entity class, which had multiple constructors here. Let's go ahead and add a destructor. A destructor begins with a tilde and then the name of our class. So basically the only difference between a constructor and a destructor in terms of declaration and definition is the actual tilde that you put out the front of the destructor. That's how you know it's a destructor. In this case, we just have a simple class with two members, X and Y. There is absolutely no cleanup we need to do for memory here at all, since these two floats are allocated in place with our class. We're gonna talk way more about memory allocation and all of that complicated stuff in the future, so don't you worry. But for an example, let's go ahead and add a message which tells us that the object has been deleted. So I might write something like destroyed entity. And then for fun in our constructor here, I'm going to write constructed entity, or I guess we should call it created since we call this destroyed and not destructed. I'm gonna get rid of this constructor just so that we don't get too confused. I'll initialize X and Y to zero as well, just so that we're not crazy. I'll get rid of this as well. Now, since this is stack allocated, we will only see the destructor getting called when the main function exits, which we're not really going to see because our program will close immediately after that. So I'm going to just write a function here, which will perform all of our entity operations. I'll move all this code over here and I will call function. Now, if I run my code just like this, you should see created entity, then our print function running, which prints X and Y, and then finally destroyed entity. Let's take a deeper look as to how this works. I'm going to put a breakpoint on line 28 here next to our entity and hit F5. Currently, I've got absolutely nothing in the console. If I hit F10 here and look back, you can see that my entity has been created. I'm then gonna hit F10 to print and you can see that my X and Y position gets printed. And then finally, the end of the scope is reached here. We're about to jump back to line 34, which is our return address. Since this object was created on the stack, it should get automatically destroyed when it goes out of scope, which is right over here. So if I hit F10, you can see that destroyed entity gets printed to the console because the destructor is called. We jump back to our return address and everything is good. So that is essentially what a destructor is. It's just a special function, a special method, which gets called when an object gets destroyed. As for some real world examples as to why you would ever write a destructor, well again, if there is certain initialization code that you've called in the constructor, you will likely want to uninitialize or destroy all of that stuff in the destructor because if you don't, you can get memory leaks. A good example of that is heap allocated objects. If you've allocated any kind of memory on the heap manually, then you need to manually clean it up. If it was allocated throughout the usage of the entity or in the entity constructor, you're likely gonna wanna get rid of it in the destructor because when the destructor gets called, that entity is gone. You can also call the destructor manually, not something that I see a lot of people doing, rightly so, it's a bit weird if you end up doing something like that. The only reason I can really think of doing that is maybe if you've allocated using new, however, when you delete it, you decide to use something like the free function, and then you also want to call the destructor manually in that case. I don't know, not really use that often, but you can do so by just calling e dot entity like this as if it was any other function and that will actually call the destructor. If I run this code, which is innocent enough, you can see that it destroys the entity twice seemingly. We're not actually releasing any resources here so it doesn't crash, it just prints this message twice. Again, not something I would recommend or not something I, I see often at all. Very, very rarely I've seen something like this. So yeah, destructors, sorted. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.